Hi, good morning, and welcome to worship. I am so glad to have you here with us today, whether you're watching live or watching the replay. Our service for today includes communion, so I invite you now in these moments before we begin to gather whatever it is you need for communion, bread, wine, cracker, grape juice, and to have it with you for worship today. Our service today is called Living a Real Life, the Promise of Today. And so as we continue in this season of Epiphany, which is all about revealing who Jesus and who God is in our midst, we get to hear two stories about the living word that sort of comes to life in Jesus and the ways in which Jesus sort of takes all of the hopes of the past and the future and lives them in the present even now. And so we'll hear the story of Jesus going back uh, to the synagogue for the first time to teach and preach there. And we'll hear the story of the community uh, that has gathered post-Babylonian exodus uh, to try and find their way back to their home, which has been left in kind of utter destruction and chaos. And so as we get ready to begin today, uh, one more time, I invite you to gather what you need for communion and anything else that you need to make the space that you are in today feel a little bit more holy to you. You're welcome, as always, to interact with our video however is appropriate to you, whether that means typing something in the comments, using one of the emojis, or simply watching. And if you are willing to share our stream out there, I would really appreciate that as well. So I invite you now, as we get ready to begin our worship together, to take a deep breath. And welcome, my beloved, to worship. As always, the words that you see on your screen today in bold are invitations for you to participate however feels appropriate to you, out loud with whoever you might be gathered with, or simply in your head and in your heart. Our service for today begins with the gathering. Please join me now in our call to worship. In a cynical and despairing world, O oh God, you give us the words to proclaim your hope. In a violent and angry world, O oh God, you give us the words to proclaim your peace. In a dismissive and disinterested world, O oh God, you give us the words to proclaim your compassion. In a lonely and inhospitable world, O oh God, you give us the words to proclaim your love. In a grieving and weeping world, O oh God, you give us the words to proclaim your joy. And in this time and in this place, O oh God, you give us the words to worship you. Amen. Let us pray. My beloved, God's spirit is upon us. God's word has been set loose among us. God's good news has been proclaimed in our presence. And we, young and old, certain and seeking, fearful and dreaming, have all been called to give witness to these very things. And yet, day in and day out, our words fail us. Day in and day out, our lives do not bear witness to God's promises. Day in and day out, our spirits struggle to trust in the one who promises to walk with us always. And so we stop where we are, exactly as we are, to listen, to beg for mercy and forgiveness, and to hear again our call to be prophets of the Most High. Holy One, you have called to us day and night, but we have not listened. You have given us gifts for the sake of the world, but we have kept them for ourselves. You have asked us to love one another, but we have been afraid. You have implored us to protect the poor and vulnerable, but we have chosen to follow the powerful. 
You have reminded us that your grace is for all people, but we have been reluctant to share this good news. You have given us the promise of new life, but we have believed only in fear and death. You have trusted us with your living word, but we have clung to what is safe, what was before. Forgive us, gracious God, and hear us, for we are your people, your body in this world. Amen. My beloved, open your ears and hearts and hear this good news. The Spirit of God is among us exactly where we are, exactly as we are, giving us the strength to listen, to use our gifts justly, to love one another, to protect the poor and vulnerable, to believe in the resurrection, to shout with joy the promise of the resurrection, and to become a prophetic people through word and deed. Thanks be to God. And so I invite you to join me now in giving thanks for all of this and so much more by saying the peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this moment to share Christ's peace with one another, those with whom you are worshiping this morning, both in the space where you are and across all distances and divides. has broken like the first morning that good has spoken like the first bird praise for the singing praise for the morning praise for them singing Our service continues with the word. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Nehemiah chapter 8. All the people of Israel gathered together in the town square in front of the water gate and asked the scholar Ezra to bring the book of the revelation of Moses that God had commanded for Israel. So Ezra, the priest, brought the revelation to the congregation, which was made up of both men and women, everyone capable of understanding. It was the first day of the seventh month. He read it facing the town square at the water gate from early dawn until noon, 
in the hearing of the men and women, all who could understand it. And all the people listened. They were all ears to the book of the Revelation. Ezra opened the book. Every eye was on him. He was standing on the raised platform. And as he opened the book, everyone stood. Then Ezra praised God, the great God, and all the people responded, Amen, amen, with hands raised high. And then they fell to their knees in worship of God, their faces to the ground. Nehemiah, the governor, along with Ezra, the priest and scholar, and the Levites, who were teaching the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to God, your God. Don't weep and mourn. They said this because all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the revelation. He continued, Go home and prepare a feast, food and drink, and share it with those who don't have anything. This day is holy to God. Don't be grieved. The joy of God is your strength. Word of God, word of life. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yet in much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, yet in much fine gold, and sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Prophet's blessing. This blessing finds its way behind the bars. This blessing works its way beneath the chains. This blessing knows its way through a broken heart. This blessing makes a way where there is none, where there is no light. This blessing, where there is no hope, this blessing, where there is no peace, this blessing, where there is nothing left, this blessing. 
in the presence of hate, in the absence of love, in the torment of pain, in the grip of fear, to the one in need, to the one in the cell, to the one in the dark, to the one in despair. Let this blessing come as bread. Let this blessing come as release. Let this blessing come as sight. Let this blessing come as freedom. Let this blessing come. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus returned to Galilee powerful in the spirit. News that he was back spread through the countryside. He taught in their meeting places to everyone's acclaim and pleasure. He came to Nazareth where he had been reared. As he always did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting place. When he stood up to read, he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, God's Spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the place was on him intent. Then he started in. You've just heard scripture make history. It came true just now, today, in this place. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from the one whose living word speaks to us. Amen. I hadn't realized until I sat down to read our stories this week that there is this thing that many of us have been doing for these past two years, including me. And I don't think it's our fault. It's what we do as humans when we are forced to deal with stressful situations that overwhelm us, with things and moments that are beyond our control. Yes, for these past two years, I, and perhaps many of you, have been living like our lives are on hold. Like what is happening in the world right now somehow precludes actual life and living from taking place. Once this pandemic is over, we say, once things go back to normal, once we don't have to wear masks everywhere we go, once church services can look like we remember, once we don't have to limit who we see or what we do, once we can hold the bread and the wine in our hands again as we kneel around the altar, once we can get some kind of handle again on the many injustices that have come to light, once we can do politics the way we used to, once, 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 we say again and again and again, as if there will come this magical point in time in the future when all of our pent-up grief, our longing, our regret, our lament, our hurt, our confusion, our lack of control, our anger, our anger and our doubt will cease, and freedom and joy will take their place, as if there will come this time when we can stop living our half-lives and live the real lives we have been denied. But the thing is, that while we may tell ourselves that this, that this isn't real living, while we may have idealized the way things used to be or dreamed of the perfect worryless future, our lives? They have not stopped moving the world. It has not stopped living, and God has not stopped acting. Yes, over these past two years, people have been born and people have died. People have laughed and people have cried. People have fallen in love and out over and over and over. People have laid in bed at night and worried about countless little things, and people have fallen asleep with ease, content with how the day they had just lived through unfolded. People have held the hand of the one they love with assurance, 
and wondered why another hand is no longer there for them to grasp and hold on to in the moment. Yes, and God. Well, God, through all of these moments has li of living, has been there, present, constant yet changing, showing up in ways we recognize and ways that are brand new, in people we love and in strangers who have come across our paths, in moments where breathing was natural and easy, and in times when we could hardly catch our breath. Yes, these past two years, as hard as it may be to admit, to remember, to see, have been just as holy and beautiful, just as painful and broken as anything that has come before and anything that is yet to be. And if you don't believe me, just look at the people who lived with the prophet Ezra, a people who after years of exile, after years of what felt like living their life on hold in a land that they did not recognize with people they did not know, and who have finally gotten to go back to have their once this happens moment, these people still don't find their happily ever after, even after they get to go home because the land they once loved and lived in is still in ruins and their traumas, they still run fresh and loss and dislocation and oppression and chaos are still all that they know and can remember. They are still defenseless and helpless and powerless against the world that swirls around them nonstop and they no longer know who they are or who they are called to be. And Ezra, who sees all of this, who sees this people who have come home, sees their pain, sees their faces to the ground, sees their tears that fall from their eyes like rain, hears their cries of when will they be able to go back to what was or live into what will be, tells them to lift their faces from the ground and live exactly where they are, exactly as they are right there and right now. Live, Ezra tells them, and not just a little, as if they have to wait for something else to happen, for their sorrows to be erased, to finally be able to cry out, amen, in joy. No, Ezra says, for now is the time, and this is the place, and God's spirit is upon you right where you stand. In the same way God's spirit was in the exodus and in the wilderness. In the same way God's spirit was present since the beginning when it hovered over the waters of creation. Yes, Ezra says, do not be afraid. Eat the wine and feast on the food. Give to those who don't have anything and live. For God is with you right here and right now. In joy and in sorrow, in lament and repentance, in deep reflecting and in remembering, in the things that are familiar and in the things that are brand new. Yes, God is with you, Ezra says. And when the people hear this, when Ezra speaks God's word to the people, when it is proclaimed to them that no life is a half-life, that there is no going back or sitting around waiting for the not yet, something almost miraculous takes place. The people, they look up from the ground and they see. They see God all around them. They see God in all of it. See life in all its fullness. They see grace and hope and faith and joy in it all, even and especially in their hurt and in God's silence and in their sin. And as one community, one transformed community, they cry out together, Amen. And they live. They do not wait, for they know that this, that this is the day 
of the Lord. May it be this way for you too, my beloved, today and all days. May you come to see, come to know, come to trust that this, this is actual living. And that while it is not always easy or perfect or feel good, it is full of God, full of promise, full of possibility of joy and feasting and crying out of amen for all that God is doing right here and right now. Amen. service for today continues with the prayers of the people and please know as always that any prayer requests that you type will be held by me and by the community this week and so let us pray god of all people you call us to restore that which is broken and to proclaim your vision of a world made new create in us new hearts and strong voices as we pray For all leaders, that they may hear the voices of the poor and vulnerable. For the church, that it may faithfully proclaim your good news. For creation, that all living things may thrive. For the poor and those in need of help, that God may hear their cries. For those who are captive of war and victim of violence, that they may find peace and courage. For those who struggle physically, mentally, and spiritually, that they may know God. For those who are oppressed by powers beyond their control, that they may find freedom. 
for our prayers. For those who have died in the promise of the resurrection, that we may one day be joined with them. God of all hope, enliven us by your Spirit so that together we may work toward your coming kingdom, trusting that you are with us and hear us when we pray. Amen. Our service continues with the meal. Let us pause to offer all of who we are and all of what we have to God who feeds us and sends us out to feed the world. We give you thanks, God of joy, for your word of creation and promise that transforms us and this ordinary feast into something more than extraordinary. So we pray for you to take our bread and cup and use it to strengthen us so that we might live out our callings for the sake of the world. Fill us with your grace, anoint us with your spirit, and free us from our fear so that until that time when there is no more time and we join with our siblings of every time and every place, we can join all of creation in praising you, God and community, holy and one. Amen. And so we do in our places what you did in an upstairs room. Send down your Holy Spirit on us and on our gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us your body as we become yours. For among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Later he took a cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it all of you to remember me. Amen. And so gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Our service concludes with ascending. Brothers and sisters, stand you here. Let the people say amen. Stand and put away all fear. Let all the people say amen. Stand and hear the call anew. Let the people say amen. Heed the promise deep within you. Let all the people say amen. Amen, amen. Let all the people say amen. Amen, oh, let all the people say amen. Heed the promise that we give Let the people say amen For it's in our hearts that the kingdom lives Let all the people say amen Lovers of the Spirit's fire Let the people say amen Sing out your heart's desire Let all the people say amen Amen To God's blessed poor Let the people say amen Light to eyes now dark with morning Let all the people say amen To the gentle of soul will be given the earth Let the people say amen And the thirst
thirst for right will bring its birth. Let all the people say amen. Amen, amen. Let all the people say amen. Amen, oh, let all the people say amen. Amen, amen. Let all the people say amen. Amen, oh, let all the people say amen. To the bearers of mercy, mercy shown. Let the people say amen. No fear of hate, for we never toil alone. Let all the people say amen. On the makers of peace, may peace descend. Let the people say amen. To seekers of love, a vision without end. Let all the people say amen. Amen, amen. Let all the people say amen. Amen. And so finally, a blessing for all of you. The Spirit of God is upon you. God's word has been set loose among you, and you have been called to proclaim the good news that was given to you, to the world. So go forth from this place as prophets, with hearts to give mercy, with eyes to see a world in need, and with feet to bring hope and healing to each other and those you have yet to meet. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved, sharing the good news and trusting that God goes with you along the way. And thank you so much for worshiping with us this week. And I cannot wait to worship with all of you again soon.